Listen, we're going to have a chat today to many of the people that we talked to prior to the election. Um, and thank you for their involvement prior to the election and thank you those after. The next three years are going to be very difficult and very different for the Labour Party. Um, one of the very few sort of provincial seats that was held, uh, there are only two, one of them is Palmerston North and the other one is held by our current Member of Parliament um, and our current correspondent on the platform and she joins us now, Ingrid Le Leary, the re-elected Labour MP for Tyree. First of all, Ingrid, congratulations, well done. Holding that seat against the tide was no small feat. Thank you very much. And, you know, it's interesting with the special votes. It's still not a fully done deal. I'm cautiously optimistic. We've got between five and 7,000 special votes potentially coming into Tauri. So uh, it, it would take something to diminish my 1,300 and something lead. But um, anything is still possible. That's the nature of MMP and, and these odd elections, isn't it? Yeah, but if you're 1,300 ahead on the night, I, I, I always go if you're under sort of five or 600, you're in trouble. Um, yeah. But I don't think you are. Um, well, but, it was it's a bit it's, close for comfort, so I wouldn't mind an extra few <laughs> Well, just to feel a little bit more comfortable. Honey, um, let's be honest about it. Um, we chatted last week and you were a bit chipper. Were you being chipper because mm -hmm. you were trying to G yourself up and your new bad news was coming, or were you chipper because you honestly believed? Look, um, when you're r running a race, as you would know, Michael, the important thing is to keep your eye on the prize and to keep going. There's a level of, um, I guess, mental discipline. It, 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 it's no different probably than uh, playing a sport. You, you lose as soon as you even think of the possibility of losing. I had my eye on the prize. I was in a bit of a persuasion bubble where the targets of people we were door knocking and phone calling felt either pro-labor or truly undecided. There was a lot of truly undecided. So it was very sobering on Saturday night to see those numbers come in and to see them reflect nationwide, the 26 to 28 percent that the recent polling trends have been showing us. It was sobering. I hadn't allowed myself, you know, time to think of that. As the weekend's worn on, um, I have become, I guess, more uh, appreciative of the significance of retaining tidy. Um, on Saturday, it felt good. It was a bit too close for comfort. By Sunday, I was thinking, gosh, that's actually quite remarkable. I'm incredibly grateful to the people of tidy for their faith in me and... Uh, incredibly grateful when I look, as you say, at the profile of the seats and see that most of the seats with a similar profile flipped to national. Yeah, they did. Um, and that's the thing that if you look at a map at the moment and you just put them all in a colour, blue, you know, red, green um, and yellow and brown, in actual fact now, um, the incredible thing is that rural and provincial New Zealand just went blue completely. It, 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 there was no, I mean, apart from you, and as I said, Palmerston North, um, there was nothing else. It's, it's, an, it's a wipeout of the constituencies, which actually wasn't as reflected as in the party vote, Ingrid, um, necessarily in those areas. Why did, um, in your view, voters get rid of their constituency MPs to a greater extent even than the party vote? That's a $64 million question, isn't it? I'm sure it's something that we'll be doing a lot of soul-searching around, and I don't have the answers to it. It's going to take going through the booth analyses. Um, yeah, we, we've, got to, we've got to be able to crack that, because certainly the feedback when we were going out and speaking with people was that there was a lot more support. I mean, we, we were talking mainly about party vote. I ran a very strong party vote campaign, my philosophy was that if I could get the party vote, I'd get the candidate vote. I didn't hear people speaking about splitting their votes. Many people weren't that across the possibility of doing that and towards the end of the campaign, I was encouraging them to do so if I felt that we wouldn't get their party vote. Um, but I think we need to do some soul searching around that and I also think we need to have a bit more education and public awareness about MMP so that there can be a bit more sophisticated um, voting than the trends that I've seen in my own electorate. That's just anecdotal. Well, I'll give you some anecdotal stuff from my household. There are three people who voted in my household uh, and they all, all three of us split our votes. 
So that gives you, and voted for three different parties, I might add too. Um, so that gives you some indication, I think, that there was a lot of vote splitting going on, obviously, in New Zealand. The other aspect of this, not just provincial rural New Zealand, was Auckland. Uh, Mount, when Mount Albert, New Lynn, um, and some of those seats start, Tiatatu, for God's sake, um, when those seats start going the other way or are knife edges as we talk now, uh, Labour lost Auckland, yeah? Except they didn't lose South Auckland, but South Auckland didn't come out and vote. They lost those sorts of seats which you would never have thought in a million years ago. New Lynn, for Pete's sake, Tiatatu. You would never have thought those seats would go. Yeah, I'm quietly confident that um, New Lynn and Tiata 2 will be nice agents, just slip in as Labour. Let's see what happens. I think that uh, a lot of this... Uh, yeah, that, I think that's a little bit different because there were some high-profile stories around that electorate. But when we look at the trend across Auckland, that swing, which was much greater than New Zealand was anticipated, I firmly believe that had a lot to do with the second lockdown. I think Auckland was fed up with lockdown by then and never quite recovered from the trauma and uh, and the experience of it. I'm not saying that it wasn't the right decision, but the experience of lockdown and the resentment towards the government perhaps for that, I think, is what is translating into those uh, precarious seats that you're talking about. With South Auckland, I'm very disappointed that the vote didn't turn out. There was so much effort put. We knew that if we turned out South Auckland, we would get a much higher party vote. And there's lots of questions. How do we do that? Because it's many of the people in South Auckland, those communities who actually need a Labour their government the most. Ingrid, I'm here. Sorry. Yes, I'm here. Uh, and good. Uh, just can I ask, uh, the other thing is the rise of Te Pāti Māori. Um, there are two seats at the moment that Labour holds with only 487, 495 to Taitoka Road, Tamaki Makauro, Kelvin Davis and Pene Anare. And Te Pāti Māori is nibbling, as you say, there's a lot of specials to come. They ain't safe seats yet. Why? Why did Māori folk go and vote for constituency Te Pāti Māori candidates and yet vote Labour still with a majority with their party vote. <laughs> Another $64 million question. You will need to speak to Māori, I think, to, to get the answers for that. I don't know. Uh, we do know Māori Party play to identity politics and that can be a strong offer. Perhaps there is a younger vote in there. That's certainly my sense of what happened around the seat that Nanaya Mahuta um, held. Maybe younger voters are feeling more aligned to uh, the identity politic offer of Te Pāti Māori, but I think you really need to ask them. All right. Um, thank you, Ingrid. And finally, the Greens, they cannibalised you. Um, they, they went from 8 to 11%. Not a huge thing, but they took three seats, or took two seats, Rongatai, Wellington Central. Um, they picked up a lot of young people. Are they really your friend? Because, or are they trying to supplant you? Do you think, as the principal party of the left? I don't know, but I think climate change is an increasingly relevant and prescient issue, and as people become aware of that and the urgency, uh, the Greens are seen as less fringe and more mainstream. That's certainly my view, and you'd be aware that in the Dunedin electorate, for example, my good friend and colleague, um, Honourable Rachel Brooking, she won the seat quite resoundingly with the 7,000 leads for the candidate vote. The party vote, the second party vote there in Dunedin was actually the Green vote. There is a strong uh, Green sense here and we have the climate change issues that we have with South Dunedin. People are well aware of it. So perhaps it's um, proportionate to the urgency of the issue and they're very good at succession planning. You're right, they do appeal to young people. And I think perhaps young people turned out more. We'll have to look at the, the figures. My sense is that they turned out more this election because they were feeling like their vote was more relevant than it has been previously.